Hi guys, so today we're going to tell the story of Ishtapede. She was the first ever mink that I bottle raised. I will be making a playlist of all my videos of Ishtapede. So just look in the description below and you'll see a link that goes to all of my videos um, that I made way back in the day of little Ishtapede. So once you're done watching this story and you get the whole background, go ahead and watch those videos so you can see what she was like. Now previous to this, I had caught and tamed several escaped ranch mink. Um, my very first one was named Murray, followed by a mink named Taz, and then a mink named Rascal. And those were my first three mink. Uh, they, like I mentioned, were all captured as adults who had escaped from mink farms. And um, I was really excited for Ishtapede because it would be my first time to ever raise one from a baby and see what it was like having a baby mink. Now, there was a lot of preparation that went into this. Um, I, um, I got to know a, a local mink farmer and befriended him, uh, which is quite tricky to do because they don't trust people uh, due to the, you know, the crazy PETA types always attacking them. So uh, it took a little bit for me to make friends with a mink farmer that would finally allow me to uh, purchase a baby mink from him. But with some effort, I was able to make friends with a guy and uh, he sold me my first ever baby mink. Now I told him I wanted a male. Uh, male mink are roughly twice the size of females. And for whatever reason, I had it in my head that I wanted a really big, uh, strong mink. My goal with Ishtapede was most, mostly to, to uh, have success fishing with them. At this point, I hadn't really hunted or fished with a mink at all. So it was all just a, a plan in my head with no real life experience yet. And my goal, like I said, was mostly focused on fishing rather than doing pest control, like catching rats and muskrats and things like that. And I figured, you know, the bigger the mink, the bigger the fish I could catch. And that was the idea I had in mind. So when I went to the mink farm to pick out my baby, I told the farmer I wanted a little male. Well, he went and he picked out uh, a baby for me. And he said, here you go. And I looked at her and I was like, hmm, you know, I've never seen a baby mink before. But every baby animal I've ever seen, uh, mammal I should say, I've ever seen, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the genders because uh, the female part is right next to their bum and the male part is up kind of in their belly button area. And this little girl, well, this little mink, she looked like a girl to me. But I figured, you know, what do I know? I've never had a mink before. So uh, there are exceptions like bunnies and, and a few other animals that don't follow this general rule. So I thought, well, hey, what do I know? I'm not gonna question him. So I take home this cute little baby mink, 29 days old. Her eyes were sealed shut. Uh, she was just a tiny little helpless blind little creature. Well, I, I started raising Ishtapede. I gave her a bottle and fed her a little bit of ground uh, meat, uh, mostly pigeon and starling meat. As she grew, I noticed that she squatted every time she peed. And I figured, oh, maybe that's just because she's younger and as she matures, you know, she'll grow into the typical male. Because like I said, though she was my first baby mink, she was literally my third mink ever. So I knew what an adult male looked like. I figured she would just transition into that. But it became pretty clear as time went on that she was not a male. She was in fact a female. And uh, I called the mink farmer and kind of had a chuckle with him. I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> you got me a female. <laughs> <laughs> he he was really wondering how he mixed that up and to this day I, I wonder myself how the heck do you mix that up it's not very hard to tell the difference but anyway so I was so in love with my little Ishtapede there's no way I was gonna like trade her out for a male or anything by that point she was old enough to crawl around and, and kind of call to me and follow me a little bit in the yard so there's no way I was going to start over with a male I just was happy to have the mink I had even though she wasn't uh, the male I hoped for uh, little Ishtapede, she grew and developed. Oh, she was such a darling little baby. I literally carried her around everywhere I went. Um, anywhere except for like going to the bathroom, taking a shower, or going to sleep. If I wasn't doing one of those three things, I had her with me. Um, I would literally eat my meals holding my little baby mink. I would drive my car holding my little baby mink. I would go to work and hold my baby mink. Uh, I had a job that allowed me to bring my mink with me. And so she came everywhere I went, literally everywhere I went, um, I had her as she grew up. Um, she was a very sweet little baby. Every now and then she'd start playing a little bit rough 
and I'd have to tell her, hey, you know, relax with that, you know, <laughs> don't bite me too hard. And she was surprisingly responsive uh, to my voice commands. So I could kind of scold her in a rough voice and she would uh, back off and like, oh, sorry, I won't bite you so hard. And I could speak to her in a calming or, or an exciting voice and she would respond well to it. I was really surprised at how puppy-like she was and how responsive she was to my guidance just using my, my voice and my tone. Um, as she grew and developed, I started taking her on walks. Uh, we started out with just walking across the yard and getting her to walk a few feet. And little by little, I started to take her to the park. Uh, at first, I had to carry her most of the way to the park and then let her walk around while we were at the park. And then eventually, I think it was about a mile to and from the park, if I remember right, and we would go in this little park and she would play in the water. There was a little stream there. And little by little, she got more and more developed. She'd learn to dive and catch little sticks and little leaves and things. And uh, as she continued to develop, eventually I went and I purchased a whole tank full of goldfish, feeder goldfish, that I could give little Ishtapede as, uh, to give her some experience learning how to catch fish. Because if you remember, my main goal was catching fish when she grew up not so much ratting or, or the other things that I typically do with my mink now. So I got a, a whole bunch of goldfish. I think it was like 50 or 100 goldfish. I bought them in bulk, something like that. I think it might have been 100. I, I don't recall. But um, it was a whole bunch of goldfish. And um, I started out with her just catching them in a little teeny pan of water with just a couple inches of water in it. And then little by little, I progressed till deeper and deeper and deeper till finally she was swimming in the 55 gallon aquarium that I had set up for the, the goldfish. And she was actually diving down to the bottom, which took her a little while. At first few times I put her in it, she would just swim around on the surface and maybe dive an inch or two deeper. Um, but as she matured, she eventually got to the point where she was diving all the way to the bottom of this 55 gallon aquarium and catching goldfish. And uh, you know, she would catch a couple a day and uh, little by little, we whittled down this, like I said, I can't remember if it, was, if it was 50 or 100, something like that. I think it was 100 goldfish. We whittled them down little by little by little until we were down to the very last fish in the tank. And she was able to catch all of the fish. And um, in addition to the goldfish, we had a few other uh, fish. I think it was like 25 um, of another species that, that we purchased that were a lot faster because the goldfish were kind of slow and, and not so hard to catch. So we got some faster ones, which eventually she caught all the goldfish and then caught those, those 25 or some odd uh, faster fish too. Till so finally she caught every fish in this big uh, 55 gallon aquarium. And this obviously took several weeks and she just, or actually more like a couple months, as she just developed more and more and more. Finally, she got to the point where obviously we had no more training fish left and she was doing so good in the aquarium, it was clear to me that she was ready to go fishing in real life. So I found a pond nearby. It wasn't super close, but it wasn't too far away either uh, that we could go to and go fishing on a regular basis. I would take little Ishtapede down to the pond and uh, she would swim around and man, she was such an interesting mink. Unlike most mink, who, I mean, you have to keep an eye on them or you might lose them. She was so bonded to me that uh, she would keep an eye on me. So she might wander off for a little bit, but she always came back and found me. And um, one of the other interesting things about Ishtape they was she was, she was what we call exclusive. And in fact, she was exclusive to the extreme. Uh, what exclusive means is she only liked and was bonded to me and everyone else she was aggressive to. Now that's pretty normal for most mink. Uh, a lot of mink end up being exclusive. The weird thing about Ishtapede was the age at which she started showing her signs of exclusivity. Or I shouldn't even really say signs. <laughs> she full on showed very obviously that she was ex going to be an exclusive mink from a very early age. Starting at about six weeks old, she bit someone. Uh, she grabbed him by the palm of their hand and just locked down. And I always remember the day because she was such a tiny little helpless baby mink. I mean, like I said, she was six some odd weeks old and she could barely crawl across a room. That's how like feeble and, and, and young and helpless that she was. But this guy, he was holding her, was my coworker, um, uh, Chase. And Chase was holding her and he goes, all of a sudden I hear him go, ow, 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 ow. And I'm like, 
dude, what are you crying about? Because she played Bit all the time. So I just assumed she was playing a little rough with him and he was being a crybaby. So I'm like, what are you complaining about, Chasey? She's just a baby mink. And I turned around as I was saying that and looked. And she was just, uh, just bearing down, biting him right in the palm of his hand. Uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I reached in there and I pried her little jaws open. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. And I, I think he bled a little bit. I, I can't remember. But man, I, I always remember the determined look on her little baby face as she's latched onto the palm of his hand. So I thought, oh, I better be careful, you know. She's clearly uh, uh, showing some signs of aggression. Now, once I said, this was my first baby mink, so I really didn't know what to do here. So I just figured, well, I'll continue to try and socialize her, which is what I've been doing. I've been giving her lots of opportunities every single day to be handled by strange people in the hopes that she would like everyone and not be exclusive. You know, she'd be friendly mink. Well, I uh, soon thereafter, maybe a, a few days later, I took her with me to church. I, at church, taught a little Sunday school class of, I think it was roughly 12-year-old kids, 12, 13 years old, something like that. I brought the mink to, to church with me, and I don't, I don't think this was the first time I'd done that. But I brought her again to church, and <laughs> of course, she bit someone else. She bit one of the kids in class. And I said, well, I guess that's it. We're not letting Ishtape they be touched or handled by anyone else. This is the second person she's bit in just a couple days. And she's bit, bit him pretty good. Despite her just having little baby milk teeth, she really put him to good use. So I decided, okay, you're way too aggressive. We can't let other people handle you. It's just not safe. So from that point on, I was the only one to handle her. Well, like I said, Ishtape Dei was so bonded to me and so um, focused on being with me, almost clingy-like, that when I took her to the park, I would just go fishing. So I'd bring a fishing pole, and I'd go fishing, and she would run around, do her own thing, and I'd kind of keep an eye on her, but I didn't really have to worry because she always made her way back to me. And she would just go off, and it was really cool. I remember watching her go into the muskrat dens, and the muskrats would come swimming out, and they'd go sit in the middle of the pond or sit up on a log and try and avoid the mink. And she never caught one, but she just kind of harassed them. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I wonder, that's interesting to see them leave their dens. You think they would want to hide in their den. But when the mink came out, they wanted to run away from the, from the from their dens and go out in the middle of the pond. And I was like, huh, that's an interesting uh, a strategy. I guess they must be vulnerable in their burrows. Like I said, this is the first... Uh, this is the first time I'd ever really had a mink out in nature. My previous mink, the ones that I tamed as adults, I just kind of let them run around the barn, not not unsupervised. I mean, that was that was the limit of their outdoor exposure was running around the barn, around the yard, things like that. I never took them hunting or fishing or out in nature at all. So this was the first time I'd seen a muskrat mink interaction. I found that pretty interesting. Well, um as I found it uh, quite uh, quite uh, enjoyable to sit and fish while my mink runs around and, and chases things and, and swims and plays, um, I decided one night, you know what, I was, I was taking out this girl that I really liked. Uh, her name was Leticia. And um, she never had any interest in me, but I, I sure was uh, quite fond of her. And uh, I decided to take her on a date to this little pond, little quiet pond where I'd go fishing all the time. Well, of course, I brought Ishtape Dei because she went with me everywhere. <laughs> so Leticia came and we, we sat in a blanket. We were watching the sunset over the water and it was all beautiful and peaceful. And Ishtape Dei was off doing her own thing. Like I said, I didn't really have to keep an eye on her because she always came back. Well, we'd kind of forgotten about Ishtap and uh, all of a sudden, as it was getting dark and the sun was going down and we couldn't see very well anymore, all of a sudden, Ishtape Dei comes out from out of the swamp, covered in mud and wet water, jumps in the middle of us and starts drying herself off on the blanket, covered in, you know, nasty swamp water and mud. And then she goes, chomp, 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 and she bites poor Leticia and gives her, she actually, for the last time I saw her, I haven't seen her for a while, she said she still has the scar from that silly little mink biting her. And she jumped out of the blanket, ah, squealing, and I'm grabbing the mink, and oh my gosh, she was such a character, that silly little mink. One day, um, I went to uh, an institute class, and the institute is, uh, it, it's like a, a religious class that we have for college age young single adults. It was in the evening, so it wasn't very hot, and, but it was a, it was summer, so I was a little worried that maybe it was hotter than I thought. So I cracked the windows of the car, and like I said, it wasn't even hot. The sun had come down, but I was worried that maybe 
it was a little warmer than I expected and that the mink little ishtape they would get hot in the car. So I cracked the windows just a little bit and uh, went into the institute building. Well, when we got done with class, I came out and ishtape they was gone. I searched the car, I searched the car, could not find her. And I and what had happened was the crack, excuse me, the crack that I left in the window was just a little too big and she squoze out and was gone. So I was searching the campus. This was at our the college I was attending at the time uh, campus. And I searched everywhere for my mink. I looked and I called and I looked and I called for hours and I could not find her. And finally, um, I went and uh, went to bed. And the next morning I woke up and um, I called animal control. And, th and this was the first, you know, the first that I had the chance to call them because they uh, they were closed. Well, excuse me. They were closed, obviously, when I lost her because it was in the evening. So I called them first thing when they opened. And um, I really didn't expect them to be able to help me at all. I figured it was a lost, you know, little shot in the dark. Last shot, see if maybe they heard something. So I call them. I say, hey, have you guys um, had any reports of a, a, a little black ferret? I mean, it's really a mink, but most people don't know what a mink is. It, it's, it looks like a ferret. And as soon as I said that, she's like, um, yeah, we do. We, we, we've got one in here. And I'm like, oh, really? I was like shocked. I'm like, really? You have one? They're like, yeah, we just got it last night. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's her. Uh, I'll be right there. And I just jumped in the car and I sped the whole way there. And as soon as I got there, I, I go and I said, oh, you guys have my mink? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, she's, she's really aggressive. And they're like, she keeps getting out and breaking out of every cage that we put her in. She breaks out and she chases us around the room. And I'm like, yeah, she's, she's a little feisty. Anyway, so I'm like, well, can I see her? And they're like, sure. And they bring in this cage and the cage has padlocks like all over it. Like every door and crack, they've padlocked closed trying to keep her in there. Because all these stupid, silly little cages that they have, she can get out of. Like the big, strong dog cages, she slides through the bars. The little tiny animal cages, she bends the bars, you know, because they don't have anything strong enough to hold a mink. So they finally got a cage that they could kind of keep her in, and they've got the doors locked with padlocks because she, I guess, kept opening the doors. So here she is, and oh, I'm so excited. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, can I hold her? Can I hold her? Can you let her out? And they're like, yeah. And they open the cage, and I reach in, and I pick her up, and oh, she's so excited to see me, and she's licking my chin and licking my chin like a little puppy, and I'm like, oh, I missed you so much, and I was so happy to get her back. And the, the ladies uh, at the front desk are just amazed because this is the animal that's been terrorizing them all night, right? Escaping and chasing them and all this stuff. And they're like, what in the world's going on here? This... This little uh, Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde, you know, he went from an evil demon to this cute, sweet little puppy looking thing. And one of the silly <laughs> animal shelter people, they reach up like they're going to pet her. And I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't see it. And as they reach up, Ishtape, they saw her hand coming towards her and jumped at her. Ah, and I caught her in time and stopped her just in time. And her teeth got shunk, just just barely missing the lady's hand. Chick, 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 and you can hear the little teeth snap shut. I'm like, whoa, 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 pulled her back. I'm like, don't, don't touch her. Don't touch her. And she's like, I can see that. I'm like, yeah, she doesn't like other people. She only likes me. And they're like, yeah, that's made very clear. So the ladies at the desk, I ask them, so what happened? How did you guys end up with her? And they're like, well, she was at the college campus running around and she got in someone's backpack. Someone was sitting on the ground on a curb waiting for someone to pick them up and their backpack was open and she got in their backpack. Well, they reached in to get her out and she bit them. So then we were called to come in and, and take her in. And they're like, now, technically she's under quarantine right now because of rabies. And um, you, you can't take her home yet, one lady was saying. And the other lady's like, are you kidding me? You want him to keep that thing here? Get it out of here. Just let him take it and have it in quarantine himself. And this, the two ladies kind of had a little mild disagreement back and forth between what was appropriate and what was not you know the letter of the law said that they had to keep it in quarantine for eight days or whatever it was and and she was saying dude i don't care what the law says like look how cute and sweet that thing is with him but she's a devil with us we don't want anything else to do with her so finally the one lady talked the other one into letting me take her home so i took little ishtapede home and i was so happy and um i was in a a, a town that at the time um, it was not legal to keep mink in that town. They were 
you know, considered wild, uh, they were considered, excuse me, livestock, and that city was not zoned for livestock. And so the police officer came to check up on her at the end of her quarantine, the whatever it was, 14 days or whatever the quarantine was. And he came to check up on her and he's like, yeah, technically you're not even supposed to have those here in this city. And I'm like, oh really? And he's like, yeah, but you know what? If she doesn't get in trouble again, if I don't have to come back out here, then I'm not gonna do anything about it. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I could take her to my grandpa's house and he lives in the country and da da da. And he's like, if she doesn't get in trouble again, you don't have to take her anywhere. I'm not gonna come back unless she gets into trouble. And I'm like, oh, wow. And so the guy basically said, I'm just gonna look the other way. As long as she stays out of trouble, I'm not gonna get you in trouble. So I was really grateful for that guy letting me uh, keep her anyway. Um, so I was real happy and um, I was so relieved to have my, my little baby mink back. So as soon as I got her back, we went back into what we were you know, doing before. We started focusing on uh, trying to catch fish. And the little pond that I was taking her to, she was really struggling catching anything. Um, to my memory, I don't think she caught any fish. She just kind of chased them around. And what I would do is I would catch one on my fishing pole and then I would quickly take the hook out of its mouth, take the hook off the line, and then or, or I had a little swivel clip and I would take the, the hook off the swivel clip and then I'd run the swivel clip through the hole in the fish's lip where the hook had caught it. And then I'd clip it shut and I'd let the fish go and then I would call Ishtapede over and let her kind of find the fish. Um, a lot of times what I'd do is I'd see where she was already fishing and looking for fish and I'd kind of cast the fish out in front of her and then let her, you know, find it and catch it. And that was the closest she'd come to catching any fish up to this point. She still hadn't caught her own wild fish. So I decided, well, um, maybe I should go up in the mountains and try in those little streams where uh, there's like pools of water. It, it wasn't just continually flowing stream. It'd be like a little pool here and then a trickle of water to the next pool there. And that kind of situation where the fish were kind of trapped in these pools. I thought, well, maybe we could get lucky and catch a mink or, or my mink can catch a fish in that situation because where I was trying it sure wasn't working. So I took her up there and she chased a few trout around and stuff, but she just wasn't having any luck catching any fish. One thing she did find though, while she was up in the mountains was another mink. Uh, to my surprise, she was playing in the bushes and I called her to come to me and she come running out of the bushes and I thought I was going crazy and seeing double because two mink came out of the bushes and I'm like smacking myself like, what in the heck's going on here? How are there two mink coming out when I call? And as she approached me, the second mink turned around and run back in the bushes and I realized up until that minute, I thought I was going crazy. I realized, oh, it is two mink. I'm not seeing double. <laughs> and uh, so I pick up my mink and give her a little treat. And then she jumps out of my hands and goes back after the, the other mink into the bushes. And I'm like, uh oh, that doesn't sound good. All of a sudden, I hear some squabbling and squealing in the bushes. And uh, I think, uh oh, yep, now they're fighting. So I run in there and there are the two mink fighting and rolling around. And I can't tell which mink is which. So I just reach down and grab them both. And I grabbed one right around the neck and the other I grabbed around the middle, just where I happened to grab it. And they quit fighting and let go. And I'm like, okay, which mink is which? And I'm like, well, this mink's not biting me. I've got it by the middle. I look, look at her face. I'm like, okay, this is my one. And I put her on the ground. And I look at the other one. And, yep, that's the wild mink. So <coughs> I took her, put my mink in the car and let that little wild one go and, and, uh, I uh, drove the rest of the way home. So that was a wild little experience with Ishtape with, uh, there. So I was a little frustrated at this point because Ishtape they still hadn't successfully caught a wild fish. Um, at, up to this point, she was four months old. And, you know, she caught all the fish in my great big 55-gallon tank. And she still couldn't catch a wild fish. The closest she could come was catching a fish on a line, fishing line that I put on the line and let her find and catch. Uh, but I actually caught it for her. And I was getting kind of frustrated. I, I tried a bunch at that one pond that I was telling you about. I tried up in the mountains in the little streams. She never came close to catching any of the trout in the streams. They were just too fast. I was like, man, this is not working. Is she? Does she need to just mature a little more? Does she need more confidence? Like, what's going on? Well, I searched and searched. I thought, well, maybe the fish I'm trying to get her to catch are just too fast. 
So I found, I started uh, searching for new places to take her where maybe she would have uh, some kind of advantage to be able to catch these fish. Finally, I found a pond that had goldfish in it. Someone somewhere had released some goldfish, which is totally illegal by the way. Do not release goldfish into nature. They are extremely invasive and extremely harmful to our environments and our waterways. Do not release goldfish. They are not native to the United States or any part of North or South America. They are actually from over in Asia. That is where they're native. They're not native to most of Europe. They are not native to the Americas, so don't let them go. Anyway, someone unfortunately did not follow that advice and let their pet goldfish go in a pond and as goldfish do they breed like rats and they spread and filled this pond with goldfish and so i found this pond i discovered it and found oh hey they've got a population of goldfish and i remembered that in my experience in the big 55 gallon tank that the easiest fish out of the couple species that i tried uh, for my mink to catch were the goldfish. So I thought, well, if she could catch a goldfish in a 55 gallon aquarium, maybe she could catch a goldfish in a pond. So I was really excited to try this new fishing spot to see if Ishtape they could catch a goldfish. Um, but previous to, just before finding this pond, the, the, the morning before, I'd taken Ishtape they fishing at another pond. And um, in that pond, there was uh, a dead duck that had died up in a muskrat den. Now, I don't know if the muskrat pulled it in the den. Muskrats don't usually eat meat. So my guess is the duck just kind of floated in there um, after it died or something like that. I, I really don't know. But Ishtape, they had found it in the muskrat den and was playing with it and brought it out. And I saw her with that old, nasty, rotten, dead duck. And I was like, oh no, and I took it from her. Um, but it was too late. The 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 duck that she'd gotten or she'd played with and gotten her mouth uh, gave her botulism and botulism is almost always fatal what it is is it's a it's a highly toxic substance created by a certain kind of bacteria and um it it isn't the bacteria causing an infection that kills them it's the actual toxin from the waste of the bacteria and unfortunately she uh she was infected with botulism and um there, there's no cure for it. Uh, there's a few things you could do to help, but it was just too much, and uh, there was nothing I can do. My sweet little mink died uh, literally the day after I discovered this pond that I wanted to try catching goldfish in. And oh, I was absolutely devastated. I had created a, an extremely close bond between me and Ishtapede. I'd put untold hours into raising her, training her, developing her, bonding with her. I devoted my, my whole life for several months into this little animal. Uh, like I said, I was so silly, I even took her on dates with me, right? Everywhere I went, I brought this little mink. If it was even remotely reasonable, I had her with me. And um, now she was gone. It absolutely broke my heart. It totally crushed my morale. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I had this grand plan and this grand goal that I wanted to be the first guy ever to train a fishing and hunting mink. And I was going to be the first guy ever to do it. And Ishtapede was going to be my mink that I trained to become the, you know, the first ever hunting or fishing mink. And here, here I was just as she was getting to the point where I thought she could finally start having success and I lost her. And it crushed me. I mean, it, 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 it literally crushed me. Um, I decided from that point on, I was just too broken to, to start over and just get another mink. And I would have to wait a while anyway. It was fall. I really was, was just fell in love with the process of raising a baby mink. I didn't want to just go tame another one. I wanted, if I was going to get another mink, I wanted to raise another baby from the beginning like I did with Ishtapede. And I would have to wait clear till next spring. This is like early fall, late summer when this happened. So I was gonna have to wait clear till next spring. And I was just too broken. Even if uh, baby mink were born year round, like, like puppies and kittens, let's say, I was just too broken to start over. And I just finally, I kind of pushed my, my dreams aside of being a, tr a mink trainer and, and, and hunting and fishing with mink and just said, you know what? I, I can't handle this. I, I need a break. And so, I, uh, from that point on, 
I decided to, to take a break, just focus on uh, school, f focus on my college classes, focusing, focus on finding a wife. I was dating actively and not really getting anywhere. Wasn't having any luck. Maybe, maybe the vicious mink I brought along on those dates was part of it. <laughs> But I was, I was bound and determined I wanted to have a family. And um, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on preparing for my future family and finding the right partner to create that family with. And so I decided to, to put my, uh, my dreams of having a mink on hold. Well, um, you know me, I'm a total animal nut. Maybe I didn't have the, the time or energy or, or desire to have a mink at the time, but I had to raise and keep and train something because that's my absolute passion in life is animals. So for that little break in between mink, I put my time and energies into another kind of animal. And um, I will, uh, in the next video, tell you the story about what I did in between Ishtapede and my next mink. Um, and his name was Rascal as well. <laughs> so I had a couple different mink by the name of Rascal. So I'll tell you uh, in the next video, I'll tell you what happened, what animal I used as my in-between kind of uh, while I'm repairing my broken heart from losing Ishtapede. And then I'll tell you about the next mink I got, Rascal. So stay tuned and I'll tell you more about this story. Now that you're done listening to the story of Ishtapede, click on the link in the description below for my playlist that shows the almost a dozen videos that I made way back in the day showing little Ishtapede. Now that you know all the story behind the videos, I think you'll enjoy those little videos a lot more than you would if you just kind of stumbled upon them.